Hey folks, Cooley again. Got another one of your emails about high-tech cars and modern driving. This one comes in from Peter A. He's up in Vancouver, Washington. Says, I'm in the market for a plug-in vehicle. I've noticed there's a veritable alphabet soup of range estimates. What makes these all so different? And what is the process used to measure EV range? This is kind of a complicated era, Peter. When you look at a car's sticker, it used to be pretty simple. City, highway, average, very understandable. Today, we're getting into a different measurement on top of those in a plug-in hybrid, and that is we're going to add in MPGE. Now, MPGE has to be defined first, miles per gallon equivalent. The construct here is that there is 115,000 BTUs of energy in a gallon of gas, and that is equivalent to 33.7 kilowatt hours of electricity stored in a battery. Okay, now there's our equivalent in terms of energy to energy. For example, a 2019 Nissan Leaf Plus has a 68 kilowatt hour battery. Divide that by our 33.7 kilowatt hours and you get about two gallons of electricity. That doesn't sound like it's going to get you very far, does it? Except that an electric car is much more efficient than a combustion car. EV motors can run at about 85% efficiency, or a gas engine at best converts about 25% of the energy in a gallon of gas into motion down the road. So the EPA has tested that 19 leaf, for example, and found that it gets 108 miles out of electricity equivalent to a gallon of gasoline's energy, hence 108 mpg equivalent. Now on the plug-in hybrids like you're looking at, you're going to see two numbers, MPGE and MPG, because the car runs in two modes in a varying mix depending how you drive it. You're going to see those two separate uh, till further notice. There is no easy way to put them together into a single efficiency number because it's so highly dependent on how you drive the car, what kinds of driving you do. Some folks with plug-in hybrids dip into the gas engine quite a bit. Others almost never do and have to worry about their gasoline going stale. They run so much of the time on pure electric only. And there's no way to put that together mathematically because we have to predict how you're going to use the car, which isn't possible. Now, just when you're thinking it's a simple math problem to figure out electric range, take the kilowatt hours of battery capacity, divide that by something and get a number of miles. Of course, it isn't that simple because every car is engineered differently. Some use the kilowatt hours in their battery more efficiently than others. They're just better designed cars or more modern. So what you do is you do an EPA test cycle, as you asked about, to find out what a car will get real world, never mind what the inputs are to that. And that test goes a little bit like this. The car's battery is fully charged and then it's parked overnight to settle. The car is then put on a dynamometer. It's not run on the road. They first run through a so-called city cycle of driving behavior until the battery is depleted. Then the battery is recharged from an AC source, not a DC fast charger. The kilowatt hours that that recharge put back in are divided by the number of miles the car drove on the cycles just before it went empty. And there is your MPGE number, but not quite. To account for real world usage, terrain, climate controls, things like that, there's kind of a fudge factor. They take that number and multiply it by 0.7 to shave a significant amount off to keep the number conservative and again embracing lots of different factors that may reduce your real world range on electric power. Now interestingly, the AAA just released a new study where they took five popular battery electric cars and ran them in different weather conditions to find out the effect on range from your HVAC system, when you're running the heater, when you're running the air conditioning. I get a lot of emails about this. What they found is rather startling. If you run a battery electric car in 20 degree winter weather with the heater turned up to hit 75, you may shave as much as 40% off your range or MPGE. Now that's compared to a 75 degree day, which is kind of their index. On the other hand, if you're going to be in a warmer climate, 95 degrees, and you're going to run the AC to get back down to 75, that could shave around 17% of your range or MPG. Clearly the lesson here is EVs or plug-in hybrids in cold weather, running that heater, take a much bigger penalty, at least according to AAA, than cooling off your electric car living somewhere hot. So in sum, Peter, there are a ton of test techniques here. I'm really oversimplifying. And they have real world fudge factors built in to make sure that they're not strictly technical and that they're looking at real world parameters that are going to bring the number down. Hopefully you get something pretty accurate when you buy your car and hit the road.